right, guys, got a great episode today. Uh, everybody hit the like and the subscribe button and support the channel. Uh, I got James here today, James Moore Wellness. James, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? All right, take two, man. Let us know yes, how you got started in all this. Well, you know, so I have social media. I have a full-time massage business, but let me rewind to really what kind of started it all. When I was 18 years old, before I started school or really adulted at all, it was my senior year, right before I started my senior year. Um, it was one day in the summer. I was with my twin brother, and I um, told my twin brother, I'm going to skateboard down this hill. We were at the top of the hill. And I said, you you stay at the top of the hill. You can meet me at the bottom when I'm finished. So I got out of the, my, my car with my skateboard, and I started to skateboard down the hill. As I was going down the hill, I gained so much speed that the board began to wobble like this. So before I got to the bottom of the hill, I the board slipped out from under me and I fell falling backwards, backwards with my head hitting the asphalt. From that moment, I was unconscious um, for a month and a half and I suffered from traumatic brain injury. Um, so it was pretty intense. So um, I was in a coma for uh, a medically induced coma for two weeks. Um, I came out of it about a month later. Um, went through rehab. I was in a major, uh, where I live in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, I was in a major rehab hospital there that specializes, uh, specializes in brain injury. So I went through uh, physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. Um, long story short, I made my recovery, I ended up going to school, and I, and I came back a couple years later, and I said, you know what, I would love to work there at the rehab hospital that I recovered at. So I started my career just doing motivational speaking for the brain injury department, Talk, sharing my experiences of how I moved through brain injury. Um, then I kind of went to school for exercise physiology, got into that that world of like rehab, orthop orthopedic massage. Um, so that led me into my career of helping others and doing that. But I know that was a lot, but I made it through brain injury, and that really started um, this career and and everything I do. And so it all comes back to that. I know that's a lot, but <laughs> no, no. And that wobble, that wobble, that moment, you know. You're like, okay, how am I going to play this out? Because I did the same thing going up a hill. And uh, you're like, how do I stop this wobble? And then you're like, okay, it's bail time. Did you feel yeah. like you were going to try to bail and see if you could just catch yourself or roll it out and, and tuck? From what my memory gives me, I remember halfway down the hill, I was like, this is not going to work out. <laughs> and from there. So I, I am really fortunate to have that. You know what? Um, I had a brain stent, I had a trach, I had a feeding tube. I was I was in legit, uh, it was a legit uh, traumatic brain injury. Um, but I'm, I'm very lucky I came out alive. And, you know, one thing that's really helped me move through that brain injury, and I, and I, I was kind of con contemplating not talking about it, but it's something I'm very proud of. You know, I'm a TBI, sur for sur I can't speak, survivor, and I'm really happy to, to have gone through that. One thing that really helped me is I do have an identical twin brother, um, it's been there with me throughout the way, and I can always say, like, okay, where am I at compared to him? Yeah, it's, <laughs> Which it's is a helpful. great metrics. It's a great metrics to, to measure yourself with it, anything together, yeah. Exactly. So, I, you know, I started um, at this rehab hospital in Louisville, Kentucky. I was an exercise, physi exercise, exercise physiologist there. Um, so I specialize in spinal cord injury, helping people do rehab and things like that. At that hospital, there's other surrounding hospitals in Louisville um, that are all we're all part of a group, and I led the holistic care council for all those hospitals. So we would meet quarterly or monthly and talk about, um, you know, holistic medicine, things like meditation, massage, aromatherapy, um, things like that, yoga. And so it didn't matter if you were a doctor, a nurse, or a tech. People would come to these meetings that were led by me, and we would talk about how can we take this holistic stuff and bring it to your practice. So that kind of got me gearing into, this is maybe what I want to do outside of the hospital. And so even as I was working um, full time in the hospital, I was like, you know what, I want, to, I want to go to massage school. So I did night classes there. So about halfway in my career, I started my own business, just kind of part time. Um, and it really wasn't until COVID hit that, um, I, you know, COVID hit and the pandemic hit us and we weren't at, job, at work anymore. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm ready to get out of healthcare, and that's really what made made me have that leap of faith to jump to go full time in my business today. Um, and it's been great ever since. So I'm really thankful for all of that. Yeah, that's a amazing. Lot of big it's amazing that you were able to prepare ahead of time 
and just um, seeing a passion and moving f towards it and not being worried about how it played out, just unraveling it as it goes. And yeah. that allowed you to be ready to take that leap of faith when, when the pandemic happens. I, I don't see how you could have made that jump if you weren't already kind of walking that uh, that walk already, yeah. Most definitely. So I, you know, prior to COVID, I had already started uh, my massage business. I, I was doing in-home therapy. My office today is not wheelchair accessible, so I do a lot of in-home therapy for people too. About 20% of my business um, that I serve as a massage therapist is in the spinal cord population. So people that do have brain injuries, strokes, spinal cord injuries that are in a wheelchair. Since my office isn't wheelchair accessible, I still do a lot of in-home therapy. Um, so I already had that in, as, as, as when I was during the hospital. I had a, a physical location as well, and my wife is self-employed. She's in this location. She's a massage therapist as well. She mainly does healthy lifestyle coaching, so that includes nutrition coaching, personal training. Um, my office is actually located in Louisville at, on an airport. Literally, it's a big airplane hangar. On the second floor is, is a big, long gym. It's the whole length of the hangar. My wife personal trains there. I have an office here. Um, so everything was kind of already in set for me to make this big move. Um, it was scary because in the middle of COVID, you didn't know, um, would people want to come get a massage wearing a mask? <laughs> it thankfully all worked out. Um, social media and what that looks like in my career today, that helped. That came a little bit later. But I first had a foundation. You know, I, I didn't start out saying, I want to be a, a, an influencer. I'm a provider. Um, influencing came after, and I, I think that's the main difference. My social media isn't just to win the click. I do provide a service, and I, I really post mainly about that. I have noticed uh, the more value you offer, the more likely you are to have the market respond to you properly, and that seems to make a big difference. I mean, there is organic, there is a, a, a time period, but some people it just clicks, and it seems like for you, it clicked rather quick. Do you feel like you've always been just game to go wherever uh, you're led and just be motivated to just push for the next new thing and and not really worry about the outcome? Just go for, just just go for it kind of uh, mindset. I, I think I'm uh, I'm a go getter, um, but I I do believe in like manifestation, and I do believe that you know how I I view it like there's only so much that is in control for me, but I, I do believe that I can manifest something. So. You know, I, I always knew that I, I wanted to either perform. I'm a performer. Even b before this and d during my college experience, um, I have a bachelor's in exercise uh, physiology and exercise science. D I quit college in the middle of it. Music was always really important to me. I was in a touring band. We played every state in the U.S., every province in Canada. Um, kind of, I grew up in the punk and hardcore uh, music industry or music scene in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and that's really helped me. That really, music really helped me move through brain injury. Uh, like I, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I have an identical twin brother and I have two older brothers. And that's one thing we all have in common. So we all play music. So growing up, um, uh, we, and music was something that helped me through brain injury as well. Uh, you know, I even in my high school days, <laughs> being 16 years old, I uh, started a band. We recorded an album, put had our own shows. This is all, we didn't have a manager. We did our, everything ourselves. Um, but we played uh, shows with other bands, similar ages in a DIY spot, downtown Louisville. It was just really fun. And so, you know, music's really important. It really helped me through brain injury. And um, I really, I knew that I always wanted to perform and I love public speaking and all that stuff. So social media today, it kind of fits all those things. I get to perform, I get to talk in public, I get to share good stuff. Um, but yeah, I really manifested that. and. Um, the universe provided some good stuff for me, some good moves there. That's super cool, man. And, and they say uh, music really uh, helps you organize your brain. They say it's very mathematical in, in the way it's composed and stuff. And uh, uh, it definitely, no, most it definitely I think that was, helped. That being younger when you had the brain injury probably helped too. Yeah. And, you know, everyone, so I'm 32, almost 33 now. Every, everyone from 18 to 32 is different. Now, am I different because I had a brain injury or did I just grow up? <laughs> so, but, you know, so it's hard to say, and I have a twin brother. We're very different, but I, I'm proud of my recovery and, um, you know, I'm proud of what I do today. So, yeah. Um, so 
what what got you in a hangar? How did how did you land in a hangar? Just out of curiosity, because um, it doesn't seem like something that would uh, just fall on your lap. Yeah. So my my wife, uh, she's been self employed uh, for many years prior to me. She was doing personal training and massage. And this room that I'm in here is my massage room that I see people. Um, my wife had already, she got a deal. She was training somebody out of this gym that was already here. So she kind of laid the foundation for me. Before my wife was in this room for massage, there was already another massage therapist that had operated out of here. So I, even going into it, I already knew that the space would work. It's quiet enough. It's it's cool enough where it's not just like a regular brick building. Uh, this is an office. You get to see like private planes take off all the time. It's a beautiful sunset, all that. Um, but I knew it would work for a massage space. So that was already kind of uh, there for me. And it just, it kind of worked out. Uh, like I said, the, the universe was like, here, I'm going to put this opportunity and it's up to you to take it. And I'm so glad I did moving forward out of that. So, it, but it's a cool spot. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And uh, your, your content's great, man. I, I said it before, you know, the neck thing. I had that bump on my neck a couple times and I never knew why it was there. And it really, and now that I saw you, uh, put some pressure on that and be able to cry. I'm like, man, I got to try this. Uh, as soon as we get out of here, I'm going to try to try that. Um, I've had my knee hurt me for the last couple of years. Not really bad, but a little bit. And here's a weird one for you. It doesn't hurt when I run. It hurts when I ride a bike for a long time. Is, mm, that, is that a weird yeah. thing or what? I mean, it could be the position, you know, you're in a fixed position on a bike. It could be just you know, depending on how high your seat is, if you're really low, your knees are going to be more flexed. There's a whole bunch of things. But okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have you to know. check out the seat, the seat thing. Okay. Yeah, that's what I, I you know, so so today on social media, I have 2.9 million followers on TikTok and 1.3 million on Instagram. I'm growing my YouTube channel. That's that's coming. That's in the future. Um, but, you know, I, I, I mainly post, I started on um, TikTok 2021 uh, I hadn't I had it already had an Instagram but things were different back when I started my business in 2017 social media wasn't I never thought that you can monetize off of it I never thought that you could that it was just the, the platforms changed they were harder uh, I think all platforms it's there's never been an easier time to grow on these platforms than now things have changed for, for pro creators which is great so I already had an Instagram and I posted some, posted some pictures but back in 2021, my twin brother came to me. Um, he's a, a professional music video and commercial director. So he makes movies for a living. And so I, I trust what he said. And, and so he was like, James, you should get on TikTok. It's pretty cool. Um, so he posted some stuff about music videos and he, he got a good following. My stepdaughter was on TikTok and she already had like 20,000 followers. She was She's into like cosplay and like uh, dancing and and doing stuff like that. So I was like, okay, this is cool. I got my twin brother saying, you know, that I should get on there. My stepdaughter is already doing really good on there. So I was like, all right, um, I'm gonna post every day for a month on TikTok and I'm gonna post about what I do, which is massage. So I um, started posting and then before I knew it, I had a big following. I think the biggest kicker that made me successful on what my con why my content works is that I figured out how to make my content relatable to everyone. And so one thing that I'm really proud of that I think I, I was a really a creator of, I didn't say how, how, I don't show massage therapists how to massage. They already know how to massage. I don't show experts how to do their job. They already know, I show people how to do it. So I really, I think I was one of the first people to say how to massage your partner. I put the word partner in there and that's the most shareable content because everybody's got a partner it doesn't mean a romantic partner it means a partner and so that and so now I see all these creators say here's a partner stretch here's how to massage your partner's back uh, and I'm really proud of being one of the first ones to do that and that that made that was one of my first videos like how to massage your partner's low back boom millions of people have a partner they'll share it and that's what it really works so I think today I try to make my content as broad and general as possible and that's how you reach a big audience James, I'll be honest with you, that is the coolest thing because uh, we're mimicking machines. That's why trends exist. It's it's why little kids do what you do, not what you say. And uh, 
for you to have an original thought and say, I'm going to do it this way, even if you uh, reinvented a wheel, because someone must have wrote a book that's similar to your concept or whatever. But nonetheless, no you came up with it first when it was an available option on social media and stuff. That's the coolest thing ever, man, to say partner is huge, because how-to is another big one, too. And you, you actually Definitely. sound like you collaborated two together without even... Did you, did you know it was going to work? Did you and your brother kind of like collaborate together and, or did you just my brother got organically me, my brother come got up me started. With well, my brother got me started. I was really thankful because my wife was willing to be in on the video. She was willing to be the person on our massage. Um, but, you know, I didn't really, I didn't uh, reinvent the wheel. Um, and that's what, you know, Tesla wasn't the first like freaking car like that. The iPhone wasn't the first iPhone. Yes. It, they yeah. just did it better. You know, and that's what people do. You, we take ideas that work, and you do it better. So, I, my content is very similar to content that I've seen before. I just made it better. And if as a creator in social media, that's what you have to do. You know, we're, it's not the biggest videos aren't there. Is who's the most creative? It's who did, who took the best idea and did it the best. And Ooh, so that's kind that's of a good point. Yeah, that's a great point, man. James, that's actually a really profound thought because you're you're right. You're going to have a genre of a thousand people singing songs or doing barber or doing stretches or whatever whatever that genre will be. There'll be a 10,000 people doing it, but 1% will be on top. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to do that. It's not easy at all to, to, to do it better. Yeah, so, and so that was pretty cool. So I started, um, like I said, I got on TikTok, um, started posting in there. Before I knew it, I had you know, 100, 200,000 followers, and then I started to monetize on there. And then um, that's, that's kind of where I learned, um, okay, this could, be, this could be part of my career. So it was about a year into my TikTok success, I, which was just hilarious. I was making some money off of it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to take my TikTok videos, and I'm going to start posting them on Instagram because the Instagram just dropped this real program and then I found out you can monetize on Instagram. Um, and so I started posting on Instagram uh, my TikTok videos without the TikTok watermark. And that was the kicker. As soon as so, I removed it. Say that again. Without the watermark? Without. If you post. And what, this is what I learned along the way. If I would take my TikTok video and download it from TikTok and it had that little TikTok watermark, if I posted that on Instagram, it would always do terrible. If I when I took that TikTok or the TikTok uh, watermark off and just had it a regular video, Instagram, Instagram pumped it out better. And so that's the biggest thing. When you see any big creator, you know you got to watch out for watermarks and things like that. And then just learning what the um, what the platform is all about. Instagram. Uh, one thing that really helped me in my social media career is I found a YouTuber. His name's Robert Benjamin. He literally posted a YouTube video Monday through Friday on how to grow on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. And I just watched his videos. I followed what he said. He showed when to post, what the best time to post, what hashtags to use, what length the video you use. I just followed his advice, and it absolutely worked. So big shout out to Robert Benjamin. Um, look him up. It's free on YouTube. He, uh, yeah, he's a creator himself, but he just shows you how to how to grow on these platforms, and and uh, it worked for me. So shout out to him. So that's where I learned a lot of this. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll be honest. With you, I just learned it the hard way. I started off with nothing, and uh, I'm still I'm still growing. I'm still trying. I actually have a new project. I'm gonna I'm gonna start trying to unravel soon here and try to unroll. And uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's I the thing. It's it. also that that's another thing. It's not like you know, you know, if you wanted to be a good basketball player, you don't just immediately get good. You have to put, do it often. And same with like social media. If you want to get good at posting social media, you have to post on social media often. See what works, what doesn't. And you don't have to delete your posts that don't good. Just it's a motivation that the next time you post, it's got to be better. It's got to be better. How can I make it better? You know, on all platforms, they have analytics. You can go back and look at the percentage of the watch time, um, how many people liked it, obviously, how many people shared it, what was the engagement, and look on that. Um, you know, and that's, that's really what you got to do. Um, and it's really, it's more enticing, it's more uh, um, interesting and a kind of a drive to go to social media because there's a lot of money there. Every niche is in social media. Cooking, barber, plumber. I'm sure there's a TikTok on how to do plumbing. Oh, yeah, Certainly a lot. And actually, people don't realize 
your mundane day is way more interesting. There's something about plumbing that you do every day that's going to blow everybody's <laughs> mind if they watched it on TikTok. Right. And, right. and you just don't know. You don't know what your mundane day, what part right. of it is so valuable to everybody else. Absolutely. So every, everyone can do social media. Certain niches are bigger than others, like cooking. Cooking's huge, whereas like, you know, physical therapy niche that kind of that I'm in is a little bit smaller than cooking, but they still all have a big thing. So for anyone doing a social media, looking to do that, whatever your niche is, my suggestion would be to niche down on what you're doing. Let me see. Let's see. Niche down on what you're doing, like really double down on your niche. Make sure people know what you specialize. And then from there, once you gain success, niche out. So if you do cooking, then say, all right, getting into fitness a little bit. So for me, I, I'm a massage therapist. In the massage world, when I started posting on social media, there wasn't really a big following for massage. Um, how I made it bigger was to generalize it, not how to sp be do a therapeutic massage, how to massage your partner's back. They made it more bigger. And then from there, I did, I niched out. So I got into more like, um, here's some stretches that you could do for back pain. That's more in a physical therapy. I'm not a physical therapist. I do what I give advice with what I'm licensed to do, but I niched out a little bit. Then I got into how to crack your back, which is more chiropractic niche. That's a bigger niche. Then I got into like do this exercise for back pain. That's in the more of the fitness niche. So the, each as you niche out, your audience gets bigger and bigger. You have your foundation of what your niche is, but Niching out is a really way, great way to grow and grow as a social media provider. So. And I feel like I'm going to be able to use what I learned to start again at a, like a level three instead of a level one. So I'll be able exactly. to move forward a little bit faster. I'm kind of excited. I hope that the next uh, oh, I love that. project, yeah. Um, I appreciate the fact that you're so open-minded and you just want to be able to tell everybody how you got it all done. Because uh, some people will always uh, like leave out like the, the intimate detail and they're like kind of kind of pass over and not give anybody another chance yeah and it sounds like you're just open let, let's just talk and, and let it out because yeah. uh you've got i think the biggest following i've ever had on the show cool I, well, I believe, I, yeah i believe so because you said how, how many are on tiktok tiktok so i'm just about to hit hopefully this week um uh, i'm about fifty thousand followers away from three million so i got 2.9 yeah thank that, you and then, that, that's and i just Gain another hundred thousand on uh, Instagram, so I'm at 1.3 million followers on Instagram, which is great. Yeah, that's so I love it. Yeah, and Instagram is way harder than TikTok. It it, it is hard. It is definitely hard. Um, so now I'm just I'm hopping on YouTube. I got I think 3,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Um, what I'm really investing in my YouTube pl platform. So on TikTok and Instagram, I'm a short form content creator. I create five to six second videos. On YouTube, I'm going. I'm really investing in long-form content, so I'm creating up to five-minute videos. How to decompress your back? How to, um, and then a five minutes talking about how to decompress your back. Um, how to stretch your back? How to massage? Things like that. So you, YouTube has YouTube Shorts, which is very similar to Reels and TikTok videos, but they also have what everyone knows. You know, if you want to le learn something, you often a lot of people go to YouTube really in-depth content. So I'm really trying to dive in there. Hopefully this year, kind of get more of a following on YouTube and go from there. But I love it. It's great. Well, yeah, it looks like, I think YouTube's going to be a new cable TV. Oh, definitely. You uh, know, and TikTok, I think, is getting there too, even in, yeah. even well, in China. Well, I would say TikTok's more like radio. Like uh, radio yeah. 50 years ago, everybody listened to it in the car. Everybody listened to it in the house, at least in the morning or in the evening or something like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's the social media. I would definitely say YouTube looks because my 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 kids they don't watch cable anymore. I, we don't even have, we haven't had cable in forever. Right. Of you course. got Disney Plus. You got YouTube. You got Hulu. You got all these things, but they still seem to gravitate towards YouTube. Most definitely. I yeah. You have to pay big. for it. I don't even have to pay for it. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you know, and, and one the the cool thing about social media is that, like I said, you can monetize on it. How it monetizes, cause, and I, I like to talk about it because people are often. People often ask me, do you, so do you make money off of it? Yes, I do. It's my full-time living now. I'm a full-time content creator. All platforms generally generally work kind of the same. You get paid in a couple different ways. The first way is you get paid off how many views you get on videos. Each platform and niche pays a little bit different. 
TikTok pays, you know, certain amount for every thousand views and YouTube pays different than Instagram. Um, so every day, the amount of views that you got on your videos adds up at the end of the month. It goes in your account. It's taxable income. It's great. There's also um, kind of like a marketplace on all platforms where that's where a different um, – different creators or businesses can, businesses can come to me and say, James, we want you to post about this product and we're going to, it's an official platform how you can get paid and monetize through partnerships. And then on top of that, for all content creators, when you have a big following, the most, the greatest way to make money is just to sell digital content, whether it's eBooks, courses, programs, or exclusive content. And you know you can do that on your own, which is cool. So put all this together, you got a full time living as a content creator. It's pretty cool. Yeah, Definitely. yeah, it's really cool. And uh, I'll be honest with you, the fact that you were able to get the traction so quick is still intriguing to me. It's probably the the most intriguing part of it all. I uh, had a lady on. She was like, I couldn't get this to work. I wasn't getting any traction. And like two months in, I think it was her husband that said, you know, you got to go on TikTok. And she's like, I don't want to go on TikTok. And she just kept doing what she was doing. It wasn't getting. And then she finally went and did what she didn't want to do. And then it clicked. And, uh, okay. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So sometimes everybody's journey is different. Everybody's journey is different. And Definitely. I think that's one of my favorite parts of learning and listening and seeing how people do it is to see how your version happened. Because no one's is exactly the same. You can come exactly. to the same outcome and not have any any bearing on how it started whatsoever. It completely changes the dynamic from person to person. And oh, no doubt. You know, and uh, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm, I, I love performing. I love being on stage. I love doing all that. As a full-time content creator that fits that need for me, I love, uh, I love public speaking, surprisingly, and that actually happened after my brain injury. You know, when I first started my career we're back working in the hospital, I started just motivational speaking so I um, I would my twin brother being a director he kind of filmed me a couple times I made a motivational speaking website I got nominated for a TED talk um, which is incredible just sharing my brain injury story so I love talking uh, which is hilarious because I don't really talk too much in my videos but um, <laughs> uh, you know if you're gonna do if you're gonna do social media it is a, you, you, you have to be willing to put the hard work in you, you you can't mind being in front of people and talking and being on camera and all that so it kind of works out, but you know, it's just part of it's a personality trait, you know, um, doing social media. But um, either way, you know, it's it's great. So I would I would be seriously wondering if if the brain injury didn't trigger the the, the public speaking because you said one of the first things you said to me on both takes was that uh, you uh, yeah that's so frustrating to me but uh, <laughs> <laughs> is um, you started motivational speaking at the, the spinal cord place after you recovered it was like one of the first things it sounded like you did then the music stuff and all that but it seemed like as soon as you recovered that was like a destined thing um when you were recovering was there any hurdle that you found to be harder than, than average that you had to stop for a second and say i gotta plow through this i've got to make sure james gets through this because there's always a moment in life where you're you're talking to yourself and there's like two kind of opposing yeah. views that they fight with each other and there's a lazy one and then there's the pusher and you kind of have to choose which way you go Definitely. was there a moment while you were in your rehab you know i yeah there was and 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 i tell people you know i so as, as a provider for massage i specialize in brain injury spinal cord injury stroke i see like about 20 percent of my clients that i see now you know I, i'm in that population and even back when i was uh doing some motivational speaking about moving through my brain injury. It doesn't matter what you have, what one key thing that really helped me and one hard part was, was realizing like, I've had this injury, I'm different. And my, in, my rehab started when I realized I'm different. I'll never be the same and that's okay. And that's okay. And once I said, I'm never gonna be the same and that's okay. And once I came to peace with that, my career started. I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm I will never be, you know, and people always come back even for a spinal cord injury, for brain injury, even if you don't have one of those people for fitness, they're like, I used to walk 10, 10 miles a day. I used to do this. I used to do that. Who gives a damn? 
you're never going to be that person. You are where you are today. What can you do with it now? And that really helped me kind of move forward. And one of those things that really helped me was music. Um, you know, like I said, uh, I was a traveling musician. I played music guitar before my brain injury. Even in the hospital, my, my twin brother brought my guitar in and I was kind of piddling around with it. That remained strong. So that's really what motivated me. It was like, I'm never going to be the James that I was prior, but I can still play music and I'm going to really dive into that. That was a passion for me. So it kind of led me into passion and my passion for performing and all that. Um, so that was the biggest uh, biggest thing takeaway, I'd say, moving through brain injury. I'll never be the same, and that's freaking okay. Yeah. You know? I think the acceptance is, is the, the pivotal point. Mm, yeah, most definitely. And um, yeah. And if you're still caught up on your old self and that's what you want, you're going to be always chasing that hamster wheel. Um, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, that's a very profound thought. You really, you really hit something big there. I, I think that's a huge, huge aspect of human life is uh, is voluntarily um, accepting your your fate, voluntarily accepting your your burden, voluntarily accepting uh, your situation, and taking personal responsibility. Uh, I don't Accept, think ac ac accepting change and being okay with it. Yes, it will never be the same. It's changed. It's different, and that's all right. You know. Um, so yeah, it's cool. Well, we're in constant change, anyways, whether we like it or not. You know, and like I like we were talking about risk a little bit before. Um, there, there is no risk-free version. Doing nothing is also a risk. And, right. Uh, exactly. And and if you don't accept the moment that you're in or whatever, you're you're just fooling yourself because you still have to go through that journey. Most definitely, you know, and so moving forward, what I want to do as a content creator, I'm hoping to keep growing my account. Like I said, I'm, um, I'm still monetizing on my account. That's great. But one thing for me is that these platforms um, could be ripped out from under me at any moment. So what I'm working on providing now, um, I have my website, jamesmorewellness.com. I just uh, dropped my first ebook last summer. I have an ebook that I. People buy it from all over the world, from France, Germany, England, U.S., um, South America, and people buy it. I, my book, that I, ebook I, I created, was how to massage your partner who has neck pain, back pain, and hip pain, including like things like sciatica. So it's a how to massage book. It has video links in it. It's great. I want to con continue moving forward, creating my own content, my own sellable things. So I'm working on creating whole courses that people can buy. So a 30-day back pain course, a 30-day neck pain course. So it doesn't matter if TikTok gets banned all over the U.S., I still got my courses and I can do that. Yeah, yeah actually, it's a really smart strategy because I see a lot of guys, they get demonetized, they get frustrated, they go to Rumble, they go to all these other um, alternatives. But uh, preemptively getting into that position where I say, okay, I don't know if TikTok's going to be here forever. I think they're arguing about that right now, right? Aren't they doing exactly. that all over again? And uh, you don't know how it's going to play out with Instagram. I mean, who would have saw Elon Musk owning Twitter? Exactly. I would have never it's... seen that coming. That doesn't make <laughs> – there's no way 12 to 18 months ago you could have said that to me and I would be like, yeah, that makes sense. That guy yep. makes cars. I, I would have never dreamed exactly. and dabbled. Yeah, I would have never dreamed. So you just don't know how it's going to play out. And it may have went the opposite direction. It could have been even more scrutinized on – on things instead of being so open that people don't even want to be on there sometimes because, well, whatever. I don't want to get into the politics. Exactly. Right but but you just don't know how Instagram. Who would have saw reels either? I wouldn't have saw the reels coming. I didn't know TikTok was going to be that influential. Um. But yeah, the platforms they have they have a huge power to to especially for content creators to provide the the best living humanly possible. I, yeah, exactly. And it's great. I'm really fortunate to have a big audience where I can share my stuff and really dive into it. I figured out how how to create my videos to let the algorithm do do its work, push it out to people. Um, but again, at the end of the day, I, I, I want control. And if the platforms go down and the programs aren't available, there's no money in there, money in that, I want to, I will continue my website and be able to, to sell my stuff. And that's, that's kind of what I'm working on for me. For me and my niche as you know, there's a lot of people. There's there's about ten top creators in the in the kind of similar niche. Whether it's um, 
So I'm in the massage therapy niche, but I'm also kind of rolling around in chiropractic, physical therapy, fitness, yoga. Um, it's all collective like health and wellness niche. A lot of people offer different programs. What's different about me and what I plan to offer in the future is I think for like body muscle stuff, there's three things that you need to do to, to help your body relax. One, stretching. So that's why I into my programs or I show people how to stretch. When your muscles are really tight, stretching lengthens the muscles, helps it feel good. Two, I'm biased because I'm a massage therapist, but number two is massage. Manually manipulating muscles is what massage is. You manually manipulate it with your hands or a tool to help it release, relax, increase circulation. When you get a massage, it doesn't matter what the hell you got going on. You spike your good hormones, you feel better. So stretching, massaging, and then the last thing, maybe the most important, why do we have muscular pain? Weakness. When our, if, the, if our glutes are weak, it can throw our body out. And so oftentimes our body hurts because we're weak. And so strengthening, that's where it comes in. I use kind of my exercise physiology background and help for my wife. She's a full-time strength program, uh, personal trainer. She's a yoga teacher, trainer, person. She has all the titles of strength and so she really helps me in that aspect. So those are my three foundations why I, I think I provide something special as a creator in that niche. Uh, yeah, we need to talk about the origin of pain and how, the, like you said, being weak in something and having uh, your muscles get sore and stuff, it normally mm -hmm. has something else. Like uh, your back hurts, it's really because, like you said, your leg muscles or your, your glute muscles are weak and that escalates to the back or whatever it be. and. Uh, I've heard several people say I really focus on the origin of my pain and the origin of my discomfort and where did it really come from. And it could be yeah. just stretching. It could be just massage. Okay, we're back. Um, we're back. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're dead on with all the little niches. I really like the way you uh, you kind of compartmentalize what you're doing and try to extrapolate uh, from anything that's successful and everything. Um, how much time do you spend on all that? How much time do you spend trying to, um, I don't want to say analyze, but looking at things and saying, okay, this works, this definitely doesn't work, I'm just gonna scrap this idea all together. How much time right. do you put on your on your material after it's published? Uh, I, I'm always on my phone. That's that's the tough part about doing social media. You're, it's, it's, uh, it takes a lot of time. On the other hand, my wife is a healthy lifestyle coach, so we're, she's all about your lifestyle, so minimizing screen time before bed we go to bed early i you know 90 days no alcohol right now we have a i i have a legit fitness uh strength program schedule that i do every day to help maintain my body to do a full-time massage practice so i i try to balance it out obviously as a creator i'm on my phone a lot of times um many hours a day um but i love it and that's the thing you know i I like doing what I'm doing, and so it doesn't feel like work. But on the other hand, to support my wife and support my healthy lifestyle balance that I, I'm looking to have, I try to limit limit it. Um, I even have uh, blue light glasses that I put on at night. I have my phone set up where after 7 p.m. it changes off the blue screen. It goes to more of like a warm color. Um, so, I'm, you know, it's a balance with that. Oh, I, yeah, I, no, you know, it's huge. It's huge. Because I'll be honest with you, my daughter was uh... – talking about this herself uh, just a few weeks ago. She's like, um, if you don't deprave yourself a little bit or have a little self-control and hold back a little bit, like cutting off the phone at seven o'clock at night or whatever, and her example was uh, getting Starbucks every day. If you get Starbucks every day, um, Tuesday is just as boring as Friday because you got Starbucks every day. So if she right. holds back and doesn't get Starbucks for three days, all of a sudden what was mundane becomes like a treat. Exactly. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? And, I, I get that. <laughs> so for my big thing is not messing with anything on Sundays. And I'll be honest right. with you, it frustrates me. It frustrates me not to, but it forces me to push a little harder on Saturday. <laughs> there you and, go, yeah. And I push a little harder on Monday morning. And uh, having things change a little bit and my, my, my situation got a little, little, little rattled and my schedule got a little mixed up and the kids being home my kids were home all week so right. I, yeah and we didn't we didn't go on no big vacation so it was just total chaos at the house this kid yeah, sleeping totally. over his friend this kid sleeping over my house and then trying to oh. so i was kind of glad get to get, yeah i was kind of glad to get everybody in school and uh to get get back 
on a new schedule, and I, I think only a couple days. You just you got to be disciplined and sit down. But um, being able to to hold back a little bit and not push so much that your your every day is too much. Um, right. It, it makes right. a big difference, and you have someone to bounce off of. So she's looking right. at you, and she's like, "Okay." Okay, James, this time. I'm like, okay. You know, and that's the thing. So for each platform, um, different times. That are to, for Instagram, I post mainly in the morning. If you go, if you have a, a decent amount of followers, even if you have like 200 followers, I'm pretty sure you can go in and look at your analytics on Instagram, go down to your followers and scroll all down. Monday through Friday, you can see what time, what the peak time that your followers are on. And so – you know, an hour before, an hour after that peak time, that's your time, the best time to post on Instagram, you know, because it's a, a geo-focused app. So you it's going to reach out to you, people that follow you first, and then it's going to pump out. I could post at midnight on Instagram. It probably wouldn't reach that many people. But if I post at 9 a.m. when most of my people are on, it will, it will do better. That's not necessarily the same for uh, TikTok. Um, I, I don't care about when my followers are online for TikTok. My every post I post on TikTok, I'm in the mindset I am going to get this algorithm to push this out to new people. You know, I don't want my followers to see it. I want new people to see my content. So I'll, you kind of have to test around times that make sense and that work well. When you have a time that works well on TikTok, keep doing it until it doesn't work anymore. So for me, uh, the most ideal, my most viral posts, my most viral post on TikTok has 65 million views. I think 3.3 million people liked it, which is a lot. It was, it was a back crack video, how to crack your back at home. I posted it at five o'clock on a Friday. Well, a lot of people are on their phone. on, <laughs> So it just kind of works out. And then just kind of bring in a common sense to whoever you're posting to. If you post to a, a niche of mothers, you probably wouldn't do it in the morning when they're taking care of kids. Think about when, are, when is my uh, audience going to be online? If you post for general people, maybe – Nighttime when they're off work would make sense. And if the Super Bowl is going on, you think you're going to get a viral video during the Super Bowl? No. Post the next day. You know, you kind of have to bring common sense to it. Yeah. But so I, I'm on my uh, post in the morning on Instagram, at night on TikTok, and uh, you know, I've, since I've been posting every day for almost two years, I got a lot of content. It's pretty simple. I can just go back, see what works, and I don't have to film a lot of stuff anymore, which is nice. Oh wow! So uh, how long do you take to to film stuff now? It's pretty simple. I do try to recreate. I, I, I recreate videos. There's about five topics that I know really work: um, back pain, neck pain, sciatica, stretching, and like how to massage the back. And I try to stick with those. Why do I stick with them? Because they work. Yeah. If I post about finger pain, it's probably not going to be do well because not that many people have finger pain everybody's got back pain so that's you know you think about when you find a topic that works post about it again and again double down until it doesn't work anymore and then keep going from there so <laughs> that's yeah, pretty right. simple yeah you, you you make it sound way simpler i'll be honest with you I, I i've always struggled trying to get more uh more people to watch i never paid attention to when i put it on i just figured i'd just do a, a bulk um, about and as I learn I get my content to look a little bit better because I'm going to be honest with you when I started James it was terrible I look back at some of the oh, first yeah. couple episodes they're just straight phone calls because I didn't even have a, a webcam so yeah uh, of course yeah they're, they're well, brutal you know, uh, yeah you get better with time and, and then from there it's it's all just kind of looking at what what's out there so even if this is great on TikTok you can search whatever you can de predetermine how well your post is going to do before you even post. By, if I want to post about something, I can just go into the search bar and and search it. And then there's a filter you can put most rep, like rep, like most related, and then you can do the like count. So let's say if I type in back pain on TikTok, I go in the filter, I put like count, like so that gives me the top liked videos for back pain. If it's millions and millions of views on the videos like that, it's got a big audience for it. So I'd be like, okay, this is probably a good topic. To take it to the next level for reach, seeing what topic to post, type whatever topic you wanna do in the search bar, whatever platform you're on, and type in, and put in like count, so that would get, show you the top liked videos on that topic, and then scroll down and put this month or this week or this last 24 hours, and you can see if that topic is trending. 
If it is, if someone else is posting about it, see if you can do what they did, but better. And then you'll always be on trend. You're just seeing what the market's out there. If no one wants to know back about back pain this week, screw it. I'll find something else. Maybe I'll do about, you know, something else. But that's a really good way to really just see what's on, big on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Scroll, be, be in the feed, see what's working, and then just do it better. I hope that made sense. <laughs> no, no, that makes perfect sense, man. That, that's actually a really profound. Because um, trying to reinvent the wheel is not fun. But if you see someone else, you know, in making a longer lasting light bulb is a far better strategy than mm -hmm. trying to start from scratch, you know? Most definitely, uh, most definitely. And not only that, one of, the, one of the biggest things I found to be the, the hurdle of making content is coming up with content, coming up with an idea for a content, you know? and No doubt. Yeah. So uh, I'll be honest with you. That's how I ended up doing interviews. I thought it was just going to be me and my daughter. I thought it was just going to be me and my daughter. And we did a couple together. The first couple were together. But I thought it would just be me and her bouncing off each other and we just talk. And then we do some research on topics. And I'm like, man, this is a daunting task. Just finding a topic and then researching it and writing out everything we're going to talk about. I was like, this is miserable. I was like, what's trending right now? Why don't I go on TikTok and see what's trending right now? Exactly. And uh, that escalated to just saying, how did you start? How did so? I'm like, you know, why don't I just ask this guy? And Riley didn't want to be on at the time, so I'm like, okay, I'll get a guest on, and it just escalated That's from great. here. Yeah, no, it goes. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So. Which was not even the plan. That was not the original plan. Which is kind of cool when you do something and it just evolves into something else. Yeah, most definitely. That's really cool. And then you, you know, whatever you're doing, you the more you do it, you get better at it, and then and then you know, it goes from there. So yeah. good deal. James, I appreciate it, man. Uh, let's see. What do you, what would you say has been your biggest mistake when it comes to creating content? I do have a couple. So, part of part of what I post, I'm in the massage world, and I I've made a mistake. Uh, I've, I've I've gotten addicted to the likes I have done some content that is pretty clip bait it is pretty like really it, it's I've decreased my value <laughs> in what I'm offering and I wanted to get as many likes as possible and so you know that if I could redo my whole social media experience again I would increase the 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 value of what I'm offering and decrease the clip bait um, you know, and then also in the massage world, it's obviously um, there's community guidelines on these videos. I have had a couple violations, not for anything inappropriate, but maybe it didn't meet some, uh, you know, I have gotten violations on different things. In massage, it's a very intimate setting. Usually the person, when you're giving a massage, doesn't have clothes on. So a lot of my videos, my wife had, you know, has been, obviously everything's been pr uh, professional. I On Instagram, I've done a lot of reposting. On Instagram is one of the only platforms you can repost somebody else's video, give them credit, and you can still get followers. You can still monetize that. Um, on, you know, as long as you are, if you're reposting another video, if you're involved in the creation, you change the video, you edit it, you add to it where it's yours, you can totally post it, giving full credit. Um, in the rest of the world, in the massage world, massage is a little bit different. Draping. In European massages, draping is a little bit more relaxed. It's not as big of a deal. It's not a sexual thing. It's just a little bit more relaxed. Canada and U.S. massage, it's very professional, which is totally great. You know, we, I want, I have, as a, a male massage therapist, I want to be, make everyone feel comfortable. I don't want to feel any uncomfortableness there. Um, but I have had gotten some, a couple violations online where I'd have to like remove a video or something like that just because it is in such an intimate setting there. I've reposted uh, this other gentleman, kind of a colleague of mine, he's in South America. He put, posted this waterfall massage video, it was great. The lady was kind of, she was had draping on, she wasn't naked, but it was like a lot of people, I lost a lot of followers posting that. People were saying, this is not professional. And I was like, guys, I'm just reposting this. This is someone else's account. Um, so I just, you know, if you're doing social media, especially in the niche of massage, Make sure you stick with, look at the community guidelines, honor them, make sure you're posting appropriate stuff so you don't get any violations. Because that's one of the things, you know, you could be a really great content creator if you do, if you get so many violations, these programs could be ripped out from under you in a second. And so if I had to do it again, less clickbait, more professionalism, and uh, 
really stick with the community guidelines because you don't want to, you know, the internet's, uh, it, it can be very mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People are fickle, man. It doesn't take much for them to just say, uh, I'm not tuning in anymore. And I, I you know, and I, with top videos, you know, on, uh, I think this last year so far, I've gotten like over a billion views on TikTok. You know, when I have uh, videos that regularly get 15 million, 30 million, 60 million views with three to two million people liking video, there's, a, you know, sometimes 10,000 comments. I, that's so many comments I can't, I can't go through. I'd say about 10,000 comments in those. There's about 20% of hate. People are like, this guy's a joke. He should be canceled. People, I, I've gotten crazy DMs. People saying I'm a joke. I'm not licensed to do what I'm doing. I had even someone comment on me, found my Kentucky massage license, listed my license number and said all about him, say that he's a fraud. I'm like, oh gosh. What but that's when, when you're, if you're posting content and you're not doing it, if you're not getting haters out there, you're not, you're not branching out. There has to be, you know, you're going too safe. So part of me thinks, you know, I'm getting some hate comments out there that doesn't support what I do, but that's all right. I know I'm doing it right. Most of it's great. 80% I get good feedback. Yeah. Um, about 20% I get hate. I'm not going to lie to you, James. I would have never guessed that a massage therapist or anybody in that genre of health could possibly get hate mail. It doesn't even well, make sense. I mean, I guess I, always, I guess the waterfall thing, I guess, has a little bit of like reality to that, I, I guess. But even that, yeah. it only seems like a 5% problem. That, right. But you I know, and, and there's I, a lot of Karens out there. I, I try to put the disclaimer. I don't I sometimes put disclaimers on there. Remember, you know, I'm on. I'm not a doctor. I'm not providing medical advice. This is not, you know, always. I and I. And that's what it comes back to. I'm not giving people medical medical advice. I'm giving simple suggestions on what you can do for your muscles. And I'm licensed in to do that. I can give that advice. I I don't know anything about, you know. And people always ask me all these specific questions. I have this. What do I do? I'm like, I, I really can't tell you what to do, but these are some suggestions. And I, I have to come back and say, let me put my disclaimers out. You oh, know, yeah. this is not medical advice. This is just consult your doctor before doing this stretch. And that's that's where I'll leave it. So Yeah, that's probably the easiest way to go about it. Just consult your yeah. doctor before you do this. Yeah. yeah. That solves that probably solves you probably ninety percent. I, de still, I definitely so am staying in my lane. I'm a yeah. licensed massage therapist and that's I can tell people how to massage and stretch. So, um, you know, uh, you hear other stories of people creating content and going along and everything. And uh, how long were you trying to answer or talk to or respond to people that would comment before you said, this is just too much and I can't do it anymore? And you I just, think and for you just, anyone starting to create, if you want, if you're growing a YouTube channel at Instagram or TikTok or Facebook, when you're starting out, you want to, you want to be engaged. Comment and like on every freaking post. If you get a hundred comments, go through there, like them, comment. And I did that for a long time. It boosts your engagement. It lets people know, hey, you know why? You know, and I always do a call to action in the, either the description of the video. Not follow for more. No one wants more. Not follow for more videos. Give them a specific reason. So I say, follow to relax your body. I get in the mind. If someone's oh, watching my video, that's a, slip. that's a good one. I like that. Okay. Not follow for more fitness tips. Follow what, what are they watching the video for? And if you are commenting and being authentic, you are gaining trust of people. And they're saying, I'm going to follow this guy because he did comment back. He did read my messages. He does actually care. And, and I think once you can build that trust as what, whether you're either entertaining or educating online, as you're following builds, you, that's when you when you drop your ebook, when you try to sell something, people are gonna buy it because they trust you. You've developed that. And I yeah. think that's important. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense, man. You know, with with social media, I think you either educate or you entertain. If you're not doing that, no one cares. No one cares about. Hey, if you get on video, hey, it's James Moore. I'm this. No one cares about me. If I say, you know, get straight to it. How to relax your back in 30 seconds. Someone might watch the video for there, but if I start on there, hey guys, I just wanted to pop on here and do this. My, all, <laughs> no one cares about me. It's not about me. It's about what I'm offering. Am I educating you or am I entertaining you? And I think that if you can, with social media, if you can stick with those two, 
sometimes people uh, I'm not a comedian so I'm, I'm not that funny but I can educate people so I try to stick with that well yeah that, that goes back to what you were saying about do what you do well and then branch out and find little niches that go outside so I, I would say the two main care uh, uh, categories like you said are education or, or entertainment so yep. if you can do the education first then maybe you could flavor in some entertainment if you're exactly. entertainment first maybe you could uh, you can you can flush in a little uh, education in there if it, that that fits, but uh, but stick to what you do well first and get that down pat. Absolutely. So it's that all good. good advice, man. Yeah. Um. So James, uh, how how many uh, podcasts do you do? Is this uh, something you do once a week or? No, dude. Yeah, this is my first podcast. I, I've never. Yeah, I'm honored. Yeah. All right, very so, cool. I, so I, I appreciate your offer. I was like, wow, I would love to be on a podcast. So that's cool. So thank you for this. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure, James. I'll be honest with you. You're, you're episode 67. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I saw it on Spotify. It looked great. So uh, okay. Spotify is where it's at for yeah, me. Yeah, give me, give me some uh, some feedback. What do you think about uh, the stuff on Spotify? Because right now, that's the only one that's actually paying me right now is Spotify. That's great. Yeah, that's where I hopped on and... Uh, Looked great. I, I loved. I didn't even know it was going to be a video call, so I just I looked at some of your other channels. I was like, "Oh, cool, it's video. I better go to my office." I was, so it, it was great. Good yeah, uh, I love it. So I'm learning to do the editing stuff, which I'll be honest with you, Premiere Pro is not like CapCut or whatever else everybody else is using. It's a little bit more complicated. So I, I do have a learning curve on that. I'm just starting out. So the videos are getting a little bit better, but it's taking me a little bit more time. I'm hoping in the next week or two I can really push out because I, I like to do like you're saying, just push out more. You yeah, know? push out. You know, if you want to get a bigger following, post more. There you go. You know, and a lot of people say like, let's say you want to post one time a day on Instagram and you get thirty thousand views on a thing, and then if you post three times a day, then each video then gets fifteen thousand views. Well, you're fifteen times game. three yeah. is more than just thirty. So you. See what I'm saying? Um, you reach more people if you post more. So that's that's kind of where it's at. But you got to do it in balance because no one wants to be on their phone all the time. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's a, we were, we already talked about that too, man. Because that's a tough one. It's like okay, I'm in the zone. I don't want to get out of the zone. The kids are coming home. I got to put this down. So it's just a yeah. matter of compartmentalizing everything while I'm doing it. It's yeah. I'm like. I'm teaching people how to deal with back pain when my back really hurts because I've been looking at this phone for three hours. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I need to get up and do these stretches. So but, does it drive your wife nuts that you're on your phone all the time or does she like, wow, I'm pretty yes, impressed? It, yeah, it does, okay. No, it absolutely does. So, uh, but you know, we, she's good. She, she helps me out a lot and that's, you know, she provides one of the things that, the reason I'm able to do massage therapy and the degree, so I have, my book is open six six days a week right now. I only don't work on Sundays. Even Sundays, I do videos and stuff. But the reason I'm able to do that physically um, is because she does a, every six weeks. She provides a strength program specifically for me that supports me doing massage. So it's like a lot of mobility, um, a lot of strength, things like that. Not just my hands, but like my back, my glutes, like how I can stand and I can do five hours a massage a day and not feel like I'm going to die at the end of the day. Yeah. So my day today starts at 2. I start massaging at 2, and I will massage all the way until 7. So I'm 2 to 7 today. So. Wow. Okay. And so I do so videos you're basically, in the morning. So you're basically doing two full-time jobs right now. Oh, yeah. I love it, though. But I work for myself, so I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's great. That's so, great. Um, yeah, because you're, 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 you're in control of your own destiny. You're, you're, you're in control of Absolutely. Your and that makes a huge difference, even though it ends up being you're doing way more work than you would if you did it for someone else's dream. But I always say it's so much easier to grind for yourself than for some big ass company you don't care about. You know, you got to be self motivated. You have to be self motivated. Yeah, I think that's, that's about probably why half the people don't do it, not because they couldn't do it or they right. couldn't be successful. It's do you have the the self motivation to be daunting with yourself and say I'm not to the point where you got to have someone like your wife say, okay, it's time to turn the phone off. Yeah, it's like, okay. Or close but, the book or whatever. Exactly. I got a narrow focus and I'm going to get there. But I'm thankful for her to pull me back and yeah. <laughs> balance me out a little bit. Well, they, they say um, the greatest team is a two-team female male. For some there reason, when you put, they, they say it's an unstoppable combination. 
when two people yeah. have the like mind and they're focused on one task and one one goal, uh, does those two brains, uh, male and female combination, it's it's unstoppable. Oh, absolutely, and the fact that I have an identical twin brother, I I I value other people's help. So oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, that, I don't go it alone. I I I bring in all my support, and I'm thankful for that. Well, it seems like it was almost like the stars lined up because for him to do what he does now and what you guys used to do and all that stuff, and your wife already yeah. having the studio, it, it seems okay. like uh, yeah, it, it was like you all you had to do is do it. Yeah, exactly. So it's cool. So me, Max, my twin brother, he. Um, it's a full-time he does music videos he lives in louisville kentucky where we live but uh he flies to la a lot um shoots there and he also shoots in nashville because it's a lot cheaper to shoot in nashville than in la but um he also does a lot of commercials and stuff he's a really cool career that i've been able to vicariously live through and <laughs> see him meet some pretty cool famous people that have idols of bands that i've looked up to and grown up listening to and as all of a sudden he's filming a music video for him and it's pretty cool so yeah that's super cool and i'll be honest with you you could do a lot of that work from anywhere being remote now opens the door yeah. for so much more luxury of being able to do it in kentucky yeah it's it's pretty neat so and that was not the case before if you were going to be in music you had to go to yeah, Nashville. you, got, you yeah, had Nashville. to go to new york you had to go to la if you're going to be in the tv you were going to have to go to la it was like a non it, there was no other option yeah, I mean the internet's changed the world globally for sure, no doubt. So yeah, yeah. And there's no going back. There's no going back. This is like I said. I I really believe that YouTube is the new TV. I I can't imagine. I'm kind of shocked the networks haven't changed their 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 uh, their game plan a little bit. CBS, yeah, totally. NBC. I would think it is kind of. It's kind of weird, right? Well, it's interesting when I hear people that actually have cable. I'm like, really? It's usually well, they, my grandpa. I was going to say, they're 65 or older. and uh, <laughs> But that's all good. I love it. But Yeah, it's why. Well, not only things, that, I remember, I remember you only watch like five channels. And, after <laughs> right. about, and if you watch it for six hours, just in case no one's ever done that before, it just loops. Exactly. So exactly. I, why, why even pay? I, I don't know. I, I guess it's an old school thing. It's an old school thing. Yeah, we do the Netflix, for, yeah. Hulu, all that stuff. We have it all. But, uh, you know, I think the future is uh, TikTok's going to be cha changing even where it is and in, in like, like it is in China. You know, they have TikTok TV over there. Now you buy a TV in America, and all, every TV has like a YouTube thing on it and that kind yeah, of thing. I yeah. think TikTok's coming. I think it's going to change. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't know. It's, it's all over the news that being TikTok being banned. Um, well, I think it's I'm all talk. I think it's all talk. I'm not worried about it. No, um, yeah, yeah, well, it sounds like you're trying your best to prepare beyond that anyways. <laughs> yeah. Which is smart. So, But, James, I thank you for your time. I, I don't want to keep you any longer. Um, if you want, go ahead and plug away all your stuff and let anybody know where they can get your ebook or any other projects you're doing right now. Go ahead and, and throw it out there. Yeah. Um, biggest thing, follow me on YouTube, James Moore Wellness on YouTube. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm doing long-form content there. Um, you can visit my website, jamesmorewellness.com. Um, grab my ebook there or uh, James Moore Wellness on Instagram or More Wellness on TikTok. Follow me on there. I, you know, a lot of free information. I post multiple times every day and I love it. If you want to feel better with body wise, do it. So that's it. That's awesome. All right, James. <laughs> I hope you have a thank great you so day much, sir. I hope you have a great week, man. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you for uh, letting me on here. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. I'll, uh, I'll email you when, uh, when I publish it. Cool. Thank you so much, man. Yep. Have a great day. You too.